Hey Tim here with Canada Tech TV back with another project review for you today. Today I'm going to show you this BenQ TH585. It's a home entertainment slash gaming projector and it might just be one of my favorites that I've ever tried. So stay tuned, I'm going to tell you about this coming up. Alright guys, so yeah, this is the BenQ TH585. This is part of their home entertainment series. If you go onto their website, they've got kind of different categories that they break their projectors down into. And they sent this out, so shout out to them for actually providing me this for my you know, honest feedback and review. This is a very, very capable projector. And it is honestly, I think, my favorite projector I've tested out to date. And I'm gonna tell you why coming up here. So spec wise, this is a native 1920 by 1080p projector. It's got low input lag latency for gaming. It is 245 watt lamp in this, so it is definitely bright. I was able to use this in bright settings and have lights on in the room and things like that, and it still looked really great as far as the picture quality. This is gonna have one 10 watt speaker, which is serviceable, and then again, it's gonna sound better if you use the actual audio out port on the back here. You can use an aux cable and hook this up to a speaker, or kind of like I've shown in a previous video, I'll put that up here in the top corner. You can use a Bluetooth transmitter to make this Bluetooth and hook it up to a set of speakers that way. So it's got two IR receivers, one on the front here and one on the back. And I can definitely say that the performance with that was pretty darn good when I was pretty much right on the side of it actually. The remote worked perfect with it. I didn't have to worry about going around from you know the front side or the back side and changing angles up to try to actually get that remote to work. I didn't have any issues at all and it was really easy actually just straight from the side to control the projector. So this does have mounting options on the bottom here. If you look at the actual manual and everything, it does say that they recommend a BenQ mount. As far as warranty, if anything happens to it, if you know this were to fall out of another mount or something like that, it does state that unless it's a BenQ mount, you know, then it's not gonna be covered. So if you wanna be safe, the best bet is probably to just get one of their mounts then and that way you're covered if something would happen to it or would come you know undone from the mount. This is a DLP projector. It comes in at $599 which is a pretty competitive price for everything that it offers. Honestly I prefer this projector. I would say this is my favorite projector that I've tested and that is even with testing out the Epson Home Cinema 3200 which is more than double the price. This thing looked great in you know, all light settings, it looks great, obviously in the dark, but even with lights on in the room, uh, I found that I wasn't even bothering to turn the light off sometimes to watch some of my TV shows I was watching on this because the clarity and the color and everything was actually that good under, you know, moderate light settings. So obviously if you're going to have real bright light and, you know, windows open, full sunlight coming in, it's going to suffer a little bit, but even if you're going to watch this during daytime with, you know, say blinds drawn and you can control the lighting a little bit like that, even if you've got a good amount of ambient light in the room, this is actually still going to look pretty darn good. So let's talk about picture and your setup. So on BenQ's website, there is a throw distance calculator on there. I can put that down here below in the description. Um, I also put the manual for this projector down there because I got like a quick start guide with this. The full manual is also on their website there. You can download. So those links will be down there below. But setting this up, um, it does have a vertical keystone correction, electronic. So you can use that on the remote and kind of in the menu settings. You can basically correct the screen by vertical keystone correction. It does not have horizontal keystone correction, but you can correct that by just making sure that it is you know, tilted the right way and that it's kind of as straight as possible when you're actually setting up your picture. The other thing is this also has a screen shift. So you can vertically shift the screen up and down. And what that does is it basically just transposes the screen up and down. And there's different controls for you know, how far you want to do that. Because um, the one thing is the projection offset on this is 105%. So what that means is this actually is going to project upward a little bit. 0% um, would be if it just projected exactly straight in front of itself. So what that means is setup wise, I actually had this set up a lot lower you know, maybe down here because then the picture was actually coming up to my screen versus a lot of the budget projectors I've used are probably just at that 0% and you have to put them up pretty high because then they're going to just go straight out to the wall. So if you don't want your picture being real low on the wall, then you have to really raise it up. And I pretty much had my projector tripod maxed out 
as high as I could go height wise. With this, I actually dropped it down probably a good six to eight inches because the projector offset is actually gonna shoot it up a little bit higher, which is nice because then it's gonna clear obstacles and things like that a little easier. And then if you need to bring it down actually, you can just kind of shift that screen down using the built-in controls, which is really nice. All right guys, so uh, this is exactly what you're gonna see the first time you power this on. It's gonna ask the projector position. So your options here are going to be front projection, front ceiling projection, rear projection from like behind a screen and a rear ceiling projection. So I've got this just set up in front. The projector is literally right in front of the camera right now. So I'm going to hit front. Uh, it's going to ask for the language. So we're going to stick with English there. All right. So it's doing a vertical keystone, vertical keystone, correct the distorted image, which is noticeably wider, either the top or bottom. So you can use the up and down arrows here to correct that. You can kind of see, you know, to exaggerate it, it's going to flip the screen kind of this way and this way. So um, for now, I'm going to leave it about here. We're going to hit OK. Step four, auto source. So this will automatically search for input sources like HDMI and things like that. So we'll use that and keep that on. And then menu type, uh, basic or advanced. So advanced allows you to do more parameters. I'll maybe put that on. Um, that way I can really explore kind of how to use this. All right, and then it goes to auto source searching. Um, so then you can go and select your sources. So I'm gonna plug something in then. All right guys, so I just hooked up HDMI one on here. So uh, you can see it hooked up to my Roku and uh, automatically just picked it up. I didn't even have to switch over or anything like that. Because if you actually hit the menu settings here, this is what you're going to see. So picture wise, you can change this type of stuff. Uh, picture mode, you can change living room, cinema, sports, game. And then there is one, two user settings. Uh, there's also a bright setting on here. So that might be useful for during the daytime, but otherwise brightness, contrast, sharpness. Let's see, there's some advanced settings with gamma selection, color temp, noise reduction, fast mode, light mode. So I'm gonna go back. Um, also then, going to the next one, you have a sound mode, so you can mute. The volume set to 10 right now. Power on and off ringtone, that's currently set to off for me right now, but that would make a little sound every time I guess it came on and off. Going to the next tab, so some display options. You got aspect ratio, it's set to auto right now. Real, 4-3, 16-9, 16-10. So I'm gonna leave that on the auto there. Wall color, so you can do light yellow, pink, light green, blue, off, so so that's interesting. I'll have to look more at that. I'll put a little text up here uh, if it's something different, but it looks like maybe that's to compensate for maybe some colors that you're actually, you know, projecting on. Maybe that changes the color that it's pitching onto the wall based on the color of your wall. Overscan adjustment, 3D, digital lens shift. So this is what I was showing you going up and down, moving the screen vertically. And that is it for display system setup. So here we've got language, background color, splash screen, can be black, blue, BenQ, projector position, which we set up on initial startup. If you needed to change that, you could always go in and change this. It just does it live, it looks like, from rear, front, ceiling, that type of thing. Auto off is set to 20 minutes. Looks like we could do disable it or go from basically five minute increments up to 30 minutes. So I guess I'll put that back to 20 there. Direct power on, on and off, menu settings, let's see. So that's where you can change the, the menu type basic or advanced. So I'm currently in the advanced that I'm showing you, but 
Looks like that basic is more like this right here. It's got the wall color and the sources and all that kind of stuff right there. So just lays it out a little bit more simple for you there. We'll go back to the advanced source rename, auto source, which is again, part of the initial setup options where it's gonna automatically pick up sources. Um, here's some advanced system settings. So light settings, light usage timer, and you can reset the timer. This will tell you kind of like your lamp hours it looks like in here. So it's showing, you know, I've just started using this here. HDMI settings, auto full limited, baud rates, test pattern, quick cooling, high altitude mode, you can do a password, key lock, LED indicators on off. So yeah, there's a lot of different settings tucked away in this advanced settings menu. And then this is kind of the information here. It's showing you your resolution. Right now we're at the 1080p 60 hertz, um, 3D format, firmware version, source, all that kind of stuff. Okay, so there's the button for the picture modes going from living room, sports, game, your user profiles, bright. And you've got the on and off on the top. You've got the keystone correction, the picture mode, uh, your buttons and OK for navigation. You've got a back button, menu, source, uh, mute, volume down, volume up, and then all of your typical, you know, fast forward and play pause controls. There's also a sound mode as well in the bottom left corner here. And then it says eco blank on the bottom right. So that will give you a black screen like that. And looks like it'll blank it out so that you're not using your bulb and, you know, wasting away energy if you say, I guess, go and get up or do something or want to turn it off for a second without actually powering down the device. And I have to admit, I'm not the biggest gamer anymore nowadays. I definitely played a lot more back when I was in college, but this does have a low input latency mode. It's supposed to help, you know, it's like 16 milliseconds latency basically. So for your gaming, you're not supposed to notice very much lag and, you know, it's not noticeable as it should be because it is pretty quick. You're not going to have any issues with that. It also does have like a gaming mode for as far as like picture setting where it kind of makes it a little bit more detailed and things like that for specifically gaming. So that's kind of cool that this is offered in this. Honestly, I would say that even if the gaming aspects weren't there, this projector would be more than enough worth it to get just based on, you know, movies and media and streaming type stuff and entertainment. Um, you know, hooking up your laptop, hooking up your gaming system obviously is a big plus of this as well. You've got two HDMI inputs on the back here. Um, you've got, you know, PC monitor connections available, all that kind of stuff. There's a USB. Like I said, you can also hook up an external audio. There's audio in and audio out. So there's a lot that you can do with this projector. You know, it does have some of the gaming features, but again, even if you're not going to use this for gaming, uh, just as far as multimedia and for streaming, this thing really stands out and is above average. The brightness on this projector is 3,500 lumens. Like I said, in the daytime, it's plenty of lumens in a moderate lighting environment still to be able to watch your picture and have good color and everything. They do say that this will last then 15,000 hours for the lamp life. That's when it's on the lamp save mode. They say in eco mode, you'll get 10,000 hours. In smart eco mode, you'll get 8,000 hours. And on the normal setting, you'll get 4,000 hours. So you can see it comes down from that 15,000 to 4,000 hours, depending on what mode you're in. But even at the 4,000 hours using it on the normal mode, what that still comes out to is if, say, you're going to use that four hours a day, 4,000 hours at four hours a day is still going to last 1,000 days before that lamp is theoretically going to be out. Essentially, if you use this for four hours every single day consecutively, that's going to give you, you know, basically three years or a little bit under three years of lamp life. So not bad on the normal setting. You could always use it on a different setting, especially in the dark if you wanted to conserve it some more. But that's not bad at all. And, you know, three years in the projector space, especially the way projectors are being manufactured now and different technology that's coming out and the push to 4K, I think that, you know, if you got this now, three years from now, that's going to be a good life, even if you wanted to move on after that. You know, you could always uh, replace the bulb, obviously, 
but three years from now, you're probably gonna have another good projector from BenQ or another company to upgrade to, so not too bad. So overall, I really like that customization and setting up the screen, having the vertical keystone correction, being able to do the digital lens shift and shift the picture up and down. Um, some other models I've seen have had horizontal keystone correction as well, so that would be nice to have on this, but overall, you do have a lot of different methods in setting up your picture. And like I said, the overall picture quality is really great, especially in the darkness, but in the light, I was actually very impressed just how well this kept its color accuracy and how well the brightness was in a moderately lit environment. So guys, I've been showing you a little bit throughout the video here, certain clips of the projector and uh, some of the clips of some of the features such as that lens shift and the vertical keystone correction. But using this, like I said, for media, it was great. Um, like I said, I've had multiple projectors, uh, budget range from you know $100 to all the way up to the Epson Home Cinema 3200 4K projector. And this by far, I think, is my favorite projector overall. But looking at the actual quality, I took some footage of actual daytime use so you could see kind of with like lights on what it looks like. And uh, I'll show you some of that here, but you know, using this I've used for Netflix, Hulu, um, HBO now, all that kind of stuff. And I was very impressed with how this actually did. For watching this at nighttime, you know, I watched like C on Apple TV and uh, watched that at night in the dark with all the lights off and it came through very nice, very good color and everything. I did notice if you put the volume up kind of high, so I think I had the volume, it goes from zero to 20, I had the volume up around 16 and higher and it would kind of peak at you know certain points when you got up to that level of the volume where then there was some disturbance you know there was some echoing um, some rumbling from like the speaker so you know it's the 110 watt speaker so like I said it's gonna suffice if you needed to use it if it's in a you know pretty quiet environment or you know you're in an apartment or your house and maybe you've got laundry running and things like that like you'll be able to hear it okay there but you will probably need to hook it up if you're gonna say use this like at a, a party or a watch party for something, you know, having this on for like a game or something. But if you're gonna do that, then I would say definitely take advantage of the uh, audio out right here. And then basically you can hook that up with an aux cable to a set of speakers. You can also use a Bluetooth transmitter in here and you can set it to transmit and actually play it to Bluetooth speakers. Um, I did a video also that you can essentially hook up this projector to a set of non-Bluetooth speakers wirelessly. You just need two Bluetooth transmitters, one for here and one for your set of speakers. And you can actually pair it completely wirelessly there with Bluetooth 5.0. So if that's something you're interested in, that video again is going to be up here. Um, but yeah. I really, really like this BenQ TH585 projector. Like I said, this is my new favorite, I think, from everything that I've tested out. I've been doing projector reviews for you know over two years now. Started in the budget space and I've been working my way up. And like I said, even compared to the Epson Home Cinema 3200, which is a about $1,600 projector model, I think I would still prefer this because this is great value for the price at $600. I can't see how you'd find a better projector. The color on this was great, the brightness, and then like I said, even using this in daytime or like moderate light settings, having on a couple lights in the room, it really didn't affect the picture quality that much. I was really impressed with it and you could definitely use this as a daytime projector. So if you're someone who's looking at maybe replacing a TV and you wanna go strictly just to a projector, I know a lot of people and from my past experience with other projectors, the problem is when it comes to daytime usage, that's where you're gonna run into issues and you might need to have a TV because the brightness and you're gonna lose saturation, all that kind of stuff in the sun. But if you can control your environment a little bit even and just have some blinds drawn and stuff, this definitely could be used during daytime and then it's gonna excel at nighttime and you could use this indoors, outdoors, you know, movie nights, whatever. Gaming, like I showed a little bit, comes through really well and then you're not gonna have very much latency at all with this. It's not really gonna be noticeable. So if you're a gamer, you can hook this up to you know, your Xbox, PlayStation, whatever you use and you're gonna get some really good results.
So guys, like I said, BenQ sent this out. So shout out to them for sending this out to the channel. They did not sponsor this video, but they did send me this so that I could temporarily review it and send it back to them. Overall, I had a very positive experience with this BenQ TH585 projector. If you have any questions or comments, definitely let me know and I'll answer them down there to the best of my ability. Um, like I said, in the description down there, I'm gonna put A, the actual affiliate link to this projector that will help me out. So if this video is helpful to you, I do get a little bit of a kickback if you buy that through that link or any other product. But I'll put that down there if you're interested in purchasing it. And like I mentioned, I'll put the actual full uh, manual for this product down there. And there's some other information, check down there. I know a lot of questions I typically get after my review is, you know, if I wanted to fill up a projector image this big, how far do I need to have it? Or how far did you have your projector away? So that chart will tell you basically if you have an X amount of feet away, what type of picture you can expect and how big your image is gonna be on the wall. So, so thank you guys for watching here with me today. I review a bunch of projectors on my channel, Canada Tech TV here. So I'd love for you to subscribe. Hit that like button if this video was helpful. And you guys take care until I see you on the next one.